In this video, I will share a bunch of useful custom variable templates of Google Tag Manager. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager, then consider subscribing to this channel. In 2019, Google Tag Manager introduced custom templates. It's a feature that allows the community to create custom templates that other people could use. Instead of dealing with custom codes, Google Tag Manager users can now solve some of their challenges by using these user-friendly templates. In this video, I wanted to show you a bunch of useful custom variable templates that can potentially save you some time as well. So without further ado, let's take a look. You can add and manage your custom templates in Google Tag Manager by going to the web containers templates section right here. And then you can manage your tag templates and variable templates. If you know how to code, you could try to create custom templates by clicking new right here. But in this video, we're focusing on those templates that are already created and they were created by other members in the community. Those members have uploaded their templates to a thing called gallery. In this video, I will be focusing on variable templates because most of the tag templates are basically just script injectors that add a particular tracking code to your website and then maybe add some additional configuration. While a portion of variable templates can be applied to any tracking tool because they work as utilities. So let's click on search gallery and here you will see what is currently available. Keep in mind that Google did not code these templates. They are created by other members of the community. If you want to find a particular custom template, you can just click on the search icon and then enter part of that template's name. So the first template that I wanted to mention is called Trim Query. This is useful in Google Analytics 4 because right now when I'm recording this video, you cannot easily and automatically remove query parameters from the URL. For example, here I have a report where the same page is reported as different pages because all URLs right here have the FBCL ID parameter and its value is different on every click. So if you want to get rid of this, you could use this particular template. So you can click on this template to add it, click add to workspace, add, and then go to variables. Then in the user defined variables, click new variable configuration, and then you will find that custom template. Here you would need to select the page URL as the target URL, and then you can decide to exclude particular parameters. For example, if you don't want to see FBCL ID in your reports, you can add it right here. If you want to see, let's say, GTM debug parameter, you would need to add it right here. And then you can add as many as you like. If you want to learn more details about how to use this variable, I have a tutorial where I explain how to exclude query parameters in GA4, and I will post a link to that tutorial below this video. Then another template is useful for those who want to migrate their GA3 enhanced e-commerce setup to Google Analytics 4. And in fact, there are several templates for you to choose from, and they usually contain the word e-commerce. They are built to check the enhanced e-commerce data layer on your website, take that data, and then build a different output of the information so that you could send proper information to Google Analytics 4. Also, you can try to enter G4 here, and then you will find additional templates that will do something similar. For example, here we have my demos and bonds template. So let's take a look, for example, at CMOS template. You can click on it, and then if you don't know how to use a particular template, take a look at useful links right here. Very often, templates have the documentation link. So if you click it right here, you will learn what that tag can do and also how to use it. Then there is another useful template that is called GA4 Ecom Items to String or Some Values. If you click it, you can then add it to Workspace. In fact, let's just don't add it. You can quickly see the description right here of what that variable is capable of doing. For example, if you have a G4 item array where you see one item, then another item, with this variable, you can either get a concatenated value of, for example, item IDs, or if you want, you can also return the sum value of particular variables. For example, if you have five products in a cart and you want to get a variable of the total price of all those products, then you can use this variable to get that value. Let me show you. 
So now I will add this to workspace. I will click add, and then I will go to variables and create a new variable. Let's click new variable configuration, then select this variable template. And then you can select the input. So for example, if you already have the GA4 e-commerce data layer, so leave this as a default input method. And then you can decide in which particular events do you want to make that action of sum. So let's say that I want to know the total price of the products that were purchased. I can click checkbox right here. And then I can select either I want to have a string of all item parameters, for example, all item IDs, or do I want to have the sum of those values? So I will go with sum, and then I have to select what kind of parameter do I want to use in this calculation? Is it discount, price, or quantity? So let's go with price. If the quantity of each product in the purchase can be different, for example, two products X, three products X, or whatever, and you want to multiply that, you can select this checkbox as well. Or you know what, maybe let's go not with the price, but with quantity. I want to know how many products were purchased at the checkout. And now let's name this variable and hit save. Now I will hit the preview button. I will go, let's say to the home page. And now let's pretend that I have made a purchase. So I will just fake some purchase information in the data layer. And we have the purchase event. Now if I go to the preview mode, I see that purchase. And I see that I have purchased two products product one and product two, quantities one and one. So I would expect that my custom variable will have the value of two. So if I go to variables and I find that custom variable of product quantity, you will see that its value is two. If you want to learn more about this variable template, then check its documentation. Now let's take a look at another template. Let's say that you want to extract a particular part of the page path. So let me go to some article I don't know, let's say this one. And let's say that I'm implementing content groups in Google Analytics 4. And I want to extract this particular part from the URL. Because if I used page path variable in Google Tag Manager, I would get this value. But I just want to get this one right here. And that can be done with a custom variable template that you can find by entering page path and clicking right here and then adding to workspace. And then click add. Now let's go to variables then click new variable configuration and then select page path right here so first of all you will need to select the source so if you're thinking about working with the page path keep this one as it is right here then you can select which part do you want to extract so in my case this is the first part when i'm talking about parts i'm talking about what is between slashes so this is the first part second part third part right here News is the second part. So here I will need to select part two and then let's save this variable. Click save and then let's click preview to refresh the preview mode. And then I will go to block this page right here. And I would expect that the variable's value will be news. Let's take a look. So I will go to the preview mode, go to container loaded, variables, and here I see page path, second part, news. And then I can use this in my text. For example, send this as a content grouping to Google Analytics 4. Then another useful variable is called URL 2.0. This one was created by Simo Ahava. Click Add to Workspace. And a friendly reminder is that if you want to learn more about, for example, this template, you can take a look at the documentation right here. So let's add this to Workspace and let's see what it can do. I will go to Variables, New, verbal configuration and select this template. So you can call this an updated version of the standard URL variable in Google Tag Manager. With this variable, you have more possibilities to decide what to do with the URL. For example, you can retrieve a particular parameter from the string. So the same was available in the old URL variable, but also you can build a custom URL. So if you have a very long URL that contains a lot of stuff like query parameters, maybe fragment, maybe something else, you can select what exactly do you want to exclude or include in the URL. And then this variable will return that value. For example, let's say that I don't want to include HTTP or HTTPS. So protocol is disabled, but I want to include host name. I want to include path. And let's say that I don't want to include query strings. So let's save this variable and then click preview. 
yeah, let me just add something right here, for example, test. So I have protocol, I have query parameters, but right now I just want to get this part right here. And that custom variable will be able to do that. Let's go to preview mode, click container loaded, and then in the variables section, I will have that value right here because none of the built-in variables in Google Tag Manager is capable of returning just this. Let's go to another variable, which is also very useful in my opinion, and its name is value range. Click to add it, add to workspace, and click add. Let's say that you're running a website that has a lot of content, like articles, blog posts, or something like that, and the length of those articles is different. And you want to find out what is the optimal length and I mean word count of the best performing articles. So the thing that you could ask your developer to do, for example, if I go to an article like this one, you could ask a developer to push the word count to the data layer. So here, let's imagine that I have asked a developer to do that. And here is the parameter word count. And this is the number of words that are in that particular article. So basically I could already send this value to Google Analytics 4. But what if I go to another article and that one has 1,299 words? Then it will have a different value. And it would be very difficult for me to analyze those numbers in Google Analytics 4 interface because every different number would be displayed in a different row. Instead, I would prefer seeing something like this. But if a developer is very busy and you already have that initial word count, you can use that value range variable to display an output that looks something like this. Let me show you. So I have already added that value range variable template. Now I will go to variables and I will click new variable configuration and then select value range. Here I need to select the input. So the input is the variable that returns some number, that initial value. So to do that, I will need to create a data layer variable that returns this particular value right here. So I will click this button. I will click plus variable configuration and we'll add a data layer variable that returns word count. And then I have to decide the size of this step. For example, here, the step is 500. If I enter it like that, then this variable will display the following ranges, one to 500, 501 to 1000, and so on. If I had a step of 100, then it would look like this, one to 100, then 101 to 200 and so on. Now let's take a look at how this works. Word count range. And let's save this. Now refresh the preview mode. And now I will go to that article. Here, if I go to container loaded and go to variables, here I have the real word count, which is 1298. But here is the range of the word count. So instead of having, you know, hundreds or maybe thousands unique values because the length of each article might be different, I would have far fewer unique values and that report would be more readable for me. Because then in my Google Analytics reports, I could see that articles of that length have generated 300 page views, then articles of this length have generated 800 page views, and then the best or the most optimal article length in terms of word count is this one because it generated the most page views. If you're wondering how to send that range of word count to Google Analytics 4, here's a very brief explanation. You could go to tags, then go to G for config, and then enter a field, for example, word count, and then you could insert that custom variable that we created, which is word count range. And then you can click save and then publish these changes. And then finally, you will need to register a custom dimension of event scope that is using this particular parameter right here. If you want to learn more about custom dimensions in Google Analytics 4, I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. So these were the variable templates that I find the most valuable, but I would recommend that you constantly revisit and check the community gallery because every once in a while new templates are added. And in general, maybe your use case will find some other variable useful. But we are not done yet. Here is a very quick list of honorable mentions where I will just mention the name of the variable. I will not show how to use it and I will leave that joy of discovery for you. So the next variable that you can check and see if that is useful for you is multiple inputs regex table, then time converter, 
then regex extract and local storage checker. If you want to learn more about them and how to use them, then click on the template and go to their documentation. And that's the end of this video where I shared a bunch of useful custom templates in Google Tag Manager. If you know other useful templates, feel free to post a comment below the video. Other people will definitely benefit from that. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you